This tutorial will show you how to make this drawstring backpack. You pull it closed like this and these are the shoulder straps. This is really great for the summertime because you can put the few things in it that you need to carry and throw it on your back and it's lightweight and comfortable so you don't have to worry about taking your purse. This is great for camping or hiking or going to the beach or doing any sort of touristy thing where you just want to make sure you have the few items on you but you don't want to carry your purse. I'm not an expert by any means, but I thought this was a fun and simple project, and I hope you enjoy. Your materials you need are half a yard each of a lining material and an outside material. You want to use some sort of woven material, preferably something like 100% cotton or a poly cotton blend. You can use something like a quilting cotton or a calico or something like that would work really well. You'll need some yarn for your drawstring. This is just acrylic worsted weight yarn and you'll need about 12 yards and some thread. The tools you need also very simple. You'll need sewing pins and you'll also need a hand needle and a measuring tape, a pair of scissors, you'll also need an iron and an ironing board and a sewing machine. I pre-washed my fabric to prep it it's not critical for this project, but it's something that I like to do. And then I pressed it, and now I'm going to cut off the selvages. And I need to cut this into a rectangle that is 26 inches by 14 inches. So I'm going to measure down the length 26 inches and make some marks with a pencil. And then using those marks, I'm just going to cut this at that length. And then I'm going to fold it into quarters just to make it more manageable. and measure 14 inches down. And then cut at those marks. So now my fabric is 26 inches by 14 inches and I'm going to do this with both pieces of fabric. Now for each piece you want to fold it up like this, matching the top edge and the side edges. And you want to fold it so right sides are together. You do that with both pieces. So this is the fabric that's going to be the outside of the bag. And I have it folded right sides together. With the fold is down here. And I'm just going to put some marks. So I'm going to measure one inch from the top and put a mark there. And I'm just using a regular pencil. This is just a little golf pencil. And then at two inches I'm going to make another mark. And then from the bottom I'm going to measure five eighths from inch, five eighths inch from the bottom and put a mark there. And I'm going to flip this over and make the same markings on this other side. Then I'm just going to use some pins to hold my layers together so they don't shift while I'm sewing them. This is your lining material and it's folded the same way so right sides are facing and your fold is down here at the bottom. And I've pinned this together just so the layers don't shift. And there's not really anything to mark on this, but you do want to make sure you're leaving a four inch gap and it could be on either side. So I'm just going to mark just so I don't forget to leave a four inch gap. Like that. Okay, so using a five eighth inch seam allowance, I'm going to start at the top and back tack, go down to that one inch mark and back tack again. Now I'm going to lift the presser foot and move down to the next uh, mark that was at 
two inches and I'm going to back tack and then sew all the way down to the bottom until I reach that mark that was 5 eighths inch from the bottom. And make sure your back tack at the end, I forgot to mention that, back tack at the end of your side seam. Now this thread here, where we jumped and skipped that uh, open space, just clip those threads. Clip all your threads short. And this space that we skipped, this one inch space that we skipped, this is where the drawstring is going to go in. Now I'll just do the same thing on the other side. Now to sew the lining, you're just going to basically just sew side seams. And on the one side, whichever side you choose, it doesn't really matter, you're going to make sure you leave that 4 inch gap. So I'm going to back tack at the top, go all the way down to the first mark where I'm going to leave the gap and back tack. Then skip that gap and start sewing again, back tacking at the beginning at the end. And this is also 5 8 inch seam allowance. And you'll want to clip this loose thread that's spanning the gap as well. For the other side, we're just going to sew a seam. And it's going to be 5 8 inch seam allowance and back tack at the top and the bottom. Once you have your side seam sewn, we're going to press them open and pressing them open will just make it easier for them to press flat when you turn it right side out. Once they're pressed open, turn it right side out and press your side seams flat. This is the lining fabric, and I'm also going to press these seams open. So now we have our outside fabric, which has been turned right side out, and our lining fabric, which is still right side in. So we're going to put them inside of each other. So lining up the bottom corners together, and then you're top edges are together like this. So because this one is not turned inside out, this is right side and this is right side, so these are going to be right sides together. And then you want to line up your seams, your side seams. So let me see, a little closer. What I do is open up your seam allowance and you want to line your seams up right against each other. So when you put your pin down your down your seam here, 
So you'll put your pin right in there and it should come right up on the other side right into the seam line and then go down into the seam line and back through this seam you can see that that'll just make sure that you're um, nice and even and straight and then do that on the other side so open up your seam allowance lining it up seam to seam making sure your seam allowances are nice and flat take a second pin and pin all the layers together Okay, and now just going along the top edge put a couple more pins just so your layers will stay together and on the other side as well Okay, so now we just need to sew the top around the top edge using a quarter inch seam allowance. So that will just line up right to the edge of my presser foot. And I'm just going to go forward, back tack, and then go all the way around. So now I've sewn all the way around the top edge. So what I'm going to do is turn this and what I need to do is find that gap in the lining, in the side seam of the lining, and I'm going to pull the outside fabric through that hole and continue to pull until it pulls the lining right side out as well. So now it looks like this. It's basically the two squares attached at this seam we just made and these are both right sides facing out. So what I want to do is press this seam flat. Okay, so I'm just going to press this flat. I'm going to do it on both sides. And then I'm going to put this lining down inside. So I'm just pinching and pulling up the top layer of the, um, at the seam and just push that lining down inside like this. You want to push until the corners are all the way down in the corners of the outside fabric. And now I'm just going to press the seam here along the top edge. And go all the way around. So now what we need to do is make the casing for the drawstring. And here on the side, let's see if we can zoom in. On the side, this here, this opening, this is where we skipped that one inch when we first sewed the side seams. So that's where the drawstring's gonna go. So you want a casing, a line of stitching here on the top and a line of stitching here on the bottom. Okay, so from the top edge to the top of this opening, it's half an inch. So what I'm going to do is just use half inch seam allowance and put a line of stitches all the way around the top, the perimeter of the top edge. Okay, 
Okay, so now we just need to do a second line of stitches and that will be the bottom of the casing. So your gap was one inch, so one and a half inches will put you to the bottom of that, um, the gap that we left when we sewed the side seams. So we'll just go one and a half inches from the top edge and sew another line of stitches all the way around. To make the drawstring, I took the 12 yards of yarn and I cut them into six two yard lengths. And I'm gonna use three at a time. So we'll take these three. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start 18 inches down. So just measure roughly 18 inches. I'm gonna tie a slip knot there. Just to um, hold it down, I'm gonna stick it under my sewing machine. And I'm just gonna braid it. So this will be just a regular uh, braid. So just with your three pieces of yarn, go from the outside in, from the other outside in, from the other outside in, just like this. And since you're using these long tails, make sure you're untangling them frequently so that you don't end up with a big knot. And we're just going to braid this yarn until you come within 18 inches of the other end. Alright, so I finished braiding and so I have the 18 inches unbraided and then I've braided until 18 inches from the end. So this is what it looks like and I did the second one just the same way. So these are going to be my drawstrings. So now I just need to put my drawstrings through my casings. And I have two drawstrings, so one is going to come into the left side, go all the way around and come out the left side. The other one's going to come in the right side, go all the way around and come out the right side. So on my drawstring, I still have this, um, oops, this slip knot from where I started my braid. So I'm just going to attach a paper clip just to make it uh, a little bit easier to thread through the casings. I'm going to just put it on a paper clip like that and use this to go through the casing. And when you get to the other opening, you might just need to move your seam allowances out of the way to continue around. And then when you get back to the first opening, you just pull all the way through. And you want to pull until the braided section just begins to enter. Like that. So essentially the part that we braided is the part that's going to be inside the casing. Now I'm just going to take this paper clip off and use it to thread the other drawstring from the other side. So now this is what your drawstrings will look like and you can take these slip knots out now. Now that both sides are through and you want to make sure that your braided part is within the casing. If it's too short you can just you know, braid a little bit more on um, whichever one's too short, and if it's too long, just undo some of the braids. So you should have braided yarn inside your casing, and then on the outside, it should be the loose yarn. <clears throat> now we're going to braid these yarns, and what you want to do is holding two yarns together at the same time, so that you have turn. You know, these six will turn into three. So you want one from each end. So two here, and then these two, and then these two. Now just holding these three yarns, just braid like this. Put this 
here to hold my work. Once you've braided all the way to the end, just tie this in an overhand knot. Then you're going to do the same thing to the other side. So now we've braided both of the drawstrings and I put the uh, knot at the bottom here. And what I'm going to do is here at the bottom corner, when we sewed this side seam, we stopped short of the bottom. So there should be a gap there where it's not sewn, if you can see. And we're just going to push this knot through that opening. And it doesn't have to be perfect. Just shove it in there. And then do the same thing on the other side. Now once you have the knots shoved in the bottom corners like this, you're going to go in from the inside and you're going to reach in and reach through that opening in the lining and grab this corner. So you're grabbing the corner fabric corner and the yarn and the knot and all that and pull that up through the lining opening so that you can see what you're doing. And so here's your knot and just pull those loose tails through as well. So now you want this knot to be just inside the seam so you can pull it from the you know the strap from the outside till it's just on the outside of the seam. So here's where we stop sewing stitching here and this is the part that we left unsewn and this is where I've pulled this through. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're just going to continue sewing down that line where we uh, stopped sewing when we sewed the side seam originally. And what that will do will secure this strap in place and it'll also finish that and close up that gap. I'm going to sew this back and forth a couple times just to make sure it's nice and secure. And then, let's see, I'm also going to clip off this big knot because we don't need this anymore. It's uh, sewn in so it's perfectly secure. And then just push that back through the hole in the lining. And that's how your corner looks on the outside. So we'll do that to the other side. So I'm reaching in through the lining and now I gotta go on the opposite corner so it's just a little bit farther over here and I'm grabbing the knot and the corner of the fabric pulling it up through the hole in the lining and let's see the knot slipped out let me pull it back through again pull it up and now we're going to finish sewing down this seam. And then just like on the other side, we're going to clip off that knot in the excess tails, push that back through the hole in the lining. So those are your two bottom corners now. Now the only thing left to do is to sew up the hole in the lining, so that excess hole where we were going through the lining. I'm just going to hand sew this to close this up. I'm blind stitching this but it's uh, not going to be seen, it's on the inside of the lining so you could just whip stitch it or you could even just run it under your sewing machine if you wanted to just to close up that hole.
Now your bag is finished and ready to use. And I hope you enjoy this tutorial. Like I said before, sewing is not something that I'm an expert in by any means. I'm just at a beginner level, but maybe you are too. So I thought I would share this with you. If you uh, would like to see more sewing tutorials, let me know in the comments. And thanks so much for watching. So glad you decided to check out my video today. If you like what you saw, give me a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe so you don't miss the next one. If you want to check out the description box, I'll put links to my Facebook and my Pinterest account so you can follow me there. And thanks so much for watching.